Welcome to Penn State's High Tunnel Research Facility. Today, we will build a high tunnel frame from collars to baseboards for a 17-foot by 36-foot Gothic high tunnel. When building your tunnel, make sure to follow your installation instructions as they may differ from what we show here. Also, make sure you have already squared your tunnel site before proceeding. Let's begin with the collars. First, you need to decide on the height of the collar coming out of the ground. We use a measurement of approximately 12 inches. Check your tunnel instructions for the preferred height. From the top of the collar, measure that size and mark it. Make sure the measurement falls below the lowest side hole. Insert a protective cap into the top of the collar and position the collar at one corner of the squared tunnel. Using a magnetic level and a sludge hammer or post pounder, drive the collar into the ground to the measured mark. If the collar is stopped by underground rock, a rock drill or other tool should be used. You could shorten the collar, but it is not recommended as it can weaken the structure, especially if you hit rock with multiple collars. Now, place a stake into the ground next to the collar and run two strings down the length of the tunnel and attach them to a second stake. Set the upper string height to the top of the collar, and set the lower string to either of the side holes. Also, attach a string level or use a laser level to ensure the remaining collars are in line and level with each other. Our tunnel producer provides a collar guide to give us the correct spacing between collars. If one is not provided, you will need to measure the spacing or fabricate a guide yourself. For our tunnel, the collar spacing is 4 feet center to center. Drive the remaining collars in on the first side based on the specific spacing provided by your tunnel kit instructions. As you start installing the collars on the opposite side, make sure that those collars are level with the ones across the tunnel. If you don't, the bows will not install correctly. Repeat the previous steps and drive the collars of the opposite side into the ground. Now onto the bows. The bows need to be assembled before installation, and this requires one to two people. Lay out the parts of the bows on a flat surface and attach them together with the supplied hardware. At least three people will be needed for the installation of the bows, depending on the size of the tunnel. One person on either leg of the bow will lift it and guide it into the collars. The third person will place a temporary nail through one of the holes to keep the bow in place in the collar. The nails will be replaced later when the baseboard is installed. Generally, the bows will not slip into the collars easily and may require some pressure applied to the bow during insertion. Repeat this process for all remaining bows. Next, we'll install the purlins. The purlins are installed one piece at a time, and the pipes may be numbered. At least two to three people will be needed for this stage. Lift the first piece of the purlin and attach to the bows using the supplied hardware. Tunnel producers may use different hardware to attach the purlins. In our case, we bolt the purlin directly to the bow, but check your tunnel kit instructions for the proper attachment hardware. Continue attaching the pieces down the length of the tunnel. You may find that the purlin holes and the bow holes do not always match up correctly. A pipe wrench may be needed to slightly twist the purlin to allow the bolt through. Repeat the process to install the remaining purlins. If your tunnel is large enough to require truss supports, those would be installed next. Our tunnel size does not require truss installation. Since truss design and attachment may differ between tunnel providers, please see your kit instructions for the correct installation procedure. Next, we will install the cross braces. For our tunnel, the cross braces are placed from the second bow to the fourth bow on a rising incline. This is repeated in the diagonally opposite corner of the tunnel. Different tunnel sizes may have more cross braces in different locations within the structure. Check your specific tunnel instructions for details. Attach the clamps to the specified bows, and then attach the cross brace to the clamps using the supplied hardware. Now onto the baseboards. The baseboards should be strong and solid. We use three 2-inch by 12-inch by 12-foot pressure-treated boards for each side of our 17-foot by 36-foot tunnel. You want to make sure that the board ends do not meet at the bows, as doing so promotes separation and warping. 
In order to shift the board ends to meet between the bows, we cut one of the boards in half for each side. The halves are placed at each end of the side, and the two full boards are placed in the middle. This allows all board ends to meet halfway between the bows. The collars of the tunnel should still have the nails in the holes to hold the bows in place. Pull the nails out enough to allow the baseboard to sit flush against the collar. Using a long drill bit, drill through the open collar hole. Add a bolt, washer, and nut, and gently hand tighten. Remove the nail from the other hole and drill again. Add a bolt, washer, and nut. Repeat that process for the entire side. When complete, go back through and tighten all nuts. The same process is used for the other side of the tunnel. Once the boards are attached, cut about a foot of baseboard material for each junction from an extra piece of lumber. Center and clamp the small board to the baseboard junction on the inside of the tunnel. Do not attach to the outside of the tunnel as this will cause air gaps at the base with the roll-up side wall. Drill through the boards in four spots and attach together using bolts, washers, and nuts. Tighten the nuts and repeat the procedure for all remaining baseboard junctions. You may have noticed the baseboard photos of our tunnels use mending plates instead of the junction boards. The mending plates work well for connecting the boards together, but they do not allow for a good seal against airflow. The junction block not only provides a stronger connection between the boards, which reduces the chances of warping, but also covers the seam and prevents air leaks. Now the tunnel frame is complete.